It has been a while. What do you have in store for D-Lab's basic training? Oh! We got a fink. What do you got going with that resistor around your head, dude? Alright. Mr. Fred, Fred, basic training head. Giving you ideas to cram inside your head. That's Fred. Alright. Today, we have a Fender Baseman. It has low distorted output. So, as usual, you got to ask yourself the three questions. Is it a bad tube? Is it a power supply issue? Or is it a bad connection? So let's evaluate the amplifier and see if we can determine what the fault is. So we'll start out with an unpowered visual inspection. And then we're going to move into testing the tubes. And after that, we'll measure voltages on the tube sockets. All right, before we get into the repair, let's see if we can verify if it really has distorted output. So we're gonna use my newest Stark Lag 55 tube type audio generator into the amp, and then the output is gonna to go to a D-Lab dummy head. From there, we're gonna look at the sine wave on the scope. So let's verify the fault and go from there. All right, so it's difficult for me to get everything in the picture for you guys, but what I'm going to do is bring up the volume. I already have the audio generator set. We need to look at the oscillate in television and see what that sine wave looks like. Here she comes. So if you look at that sine wave, you can see the top has a nice point, but the bottom is showing signs of distortion. If I crank it up, we're getting flat topping. That's equal on both sides, so I don't think that's the issue, but I think that this is the issue. That's probably the distortion that the owner is hearing. All right, so at this point, it could be the output tubes. If an output tube is not able to provide enough current to reproduce that sine wave, you would get distortion on either the upper or lower side of the sine wave. So let's check the tubes. Alright, both of the nice Sylvania 6L6s that were installed in this basement check just fine. I'm on Ampatrex AT1000. So that rules out the tubes. Let's do a visual inspection and if that fails, we'll measure some voltages. Alright, I've completed a very thorough inspection of this amplifier under my Luxo magnifying glass light and I don't see any bad connections. I don't see anything out of the ordinary except for up here. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what I see and we'll go from there. So somebody has been in this amp in the past doing some work. There's normally some resistors that come off of this terminal board. Somebody abandoned that circuitry which is fine. But what I'm looking at are these screen resistors. You can see there's two different types installed, but this one seems to have a little black mark right in the center of it. Let me zoom in. Don't know how well this will show up on video, but I wonder about the value of these screen resistors and why has this one been replaced? Let's investigate that. Okay, I've got the amp powered up. And since now I suspect the screen resistor, let's just check the voltages. So on this screen resistor we have 454 volts or so. And what do we have here? About 430. So it's much lower, which would make me think that the value of that resistor is much higher than that one. So let's shut her off, wait for things to discharge, and we'll check the resistance of those guys. All right, so the amplifier is off. I checked the power supply. It is discharged. We are unplugged. Let's check the value of these resistors. They should be 470 ohms. So here's the first one. About 678. So that guy is out of tolerance, but it's alive. Let's see what we got over here. Because this is the one that has that little funny black mark on it. Oh, looky there. I'm getting nothing 
So let's scale up and see. Because we do have voltage there, there must be something. Oh, there it is. It's 20k ohms. <laughs> that explains why we have voltage, but we don't have enough current for that tube to do its job. Let's change the screen resistors. I installed some new 470 ohm screen resistors. Here's the old ones that we pulled out. About 660 in that guy. Here's Mr. Blackmark. About 19k. Let's put it on the scope and see what that sine wave looks like now. Alright, same test. We are using the Stark Lag 55 into the Tektronix scope. Let's take a look at that sine wave. Looks a lot nicer. You can see you still get the clipping when you overdrive it, but that's okay. But take a look at the sine wave. It's equal. It's not all lagging down here. Sharp on both ends. That was obviously the cause of the distortion. So in conclusion, the screen resistor was the cause of the low distorted output that the basement amp was exhibiting. Under load, when the amp was trying to produce a signal, the screen current couldn't keep up and therefore the sine wave was not being produced properly, resulting in distortion. Now the oscilloscope that I used during this demonstration was not necessary. I did that simply so we may be able to actually see the distorted signal, but it was not required for this repair. Remember, this is basic training. So what we're trying to do is inspect test components, see if we can find the fault, and repair it. So the basement is running perfectly now, and yes, there was quite a bit more repair work that I did that was not shown on camera. I was just trying to give you guys the basics of identifying and fixing that fault. So everybody just keep in mind the three steps. Inspect, test, and repair. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for Fred and Fink for providing the content. The basement is good to go. This has been a D-Lab Front Feature Production.